Hi, this is Dave Advocate, and this is an online tutorial on volumetrics. Volumetrics is a means by which we can estimate the amount of oil or gas that is stored in a subsurface reservoir. It uses a volumetric equation, which says that the amount of hydrocarbon initially in place is equal to some conversion factor, which can get you from some, a figure like acre-feet to barrels, the reservoir rock volume, the porosity, the hydrocarbon saturation, and a number called the formation volume factor. We'll explore each of these terms in this online tutorial. I've broken this tutorial into multiple sections that include both lectures and demonstrations. There are two companion Excel workbooks which you can download and follow along with. It's important to consider the distinction between the in-place volume versus the estimated ultimate recovery, or EUR. Let's consider this diagram on the left. We have some oil pools in the subsurface at some pressure and temperature. As they produce to the surface at a different pressure and temperature, the fluids are separated. Oil is ported to a stock tank and reported in stock tank barrels, and gas is ported to a gas pipeline or a gas plant and reported in standard cubic feet. At the gas plant, the gas can further be separated into gas and liquids. As more wells are drilled and produced, the uncertainty in the in-place volume in EUR is reduced. Another important distinction is that in-place volumes considers the entire accumulation, but the entire accumulation is seldom targeted for development for economic or mechanical reasons. During the exploration and early development phases, EUR is estimated by applying a recovery efficiency term to the volumetric equation, which is simply a percent of the in-place volume. As fields mature, more accurate methods such as decline analysis are used to project the EUR as shown in this diagram here, where we look at production rates of wells versus time and can project what the ultimate recovery will be. Let's take a look at the volumetric equations. In the generic form, we say that the hydrocarbons initially in place is equal to some constant for conversion to barrels times the hydrocarbon reservoir volume times porosity times the hydrocarbon saturation divided by the formation volume factor. Let's expand this a bit by looking at oil and gas. In the original oil in place, we still have the same constant. Now the volume is the area times the height times the net to gross of the reservoir times the porosity times 1 minus the water saturation, which is equal to the hydrocarbon saturation divided by the B sub O sub I, which is the formation volume factor for oil, in which case oil shrinks as it goes to the surface and solution gas is liberated. For the gas, we look at the original gas in place, which everything being the same except for the gas expansion factor, B sub G sub I, in which case it considers that gas which is compressed in the subsurface, as it comes to the surface and the pressure is, is reduced, the gas expands. The second bullet here says that volumetrics is an integrated science. Well, what do we mean by an integrated science? In this case, we're saying that to assess the volume in place, you need experts of different types. Geologists will look at the reservoir volume Petrophysicists may be involved in looking at the porosity and the hydrocarbon saturation, and reservoir engineers will be involved in looking at the formation volume factors. So the assessor takes all this information and puts it together to calculate the in-place volume. In this tutorial, we'll explore each of these terms in this equation. Before doing the volumetric analysis, we'll need to make a geologic description of the field. In this case, we'll take a look at Pui Field from offshore Trinidad. It appears to have five fault blocks, with oil on the eastern half of the field and oil in a gas cap on the western part. But as we look at the cross section, we can see that the field is highly compartmentalized by faults. Some of the compartments are oil, 
Some of them are gas, or some have oil and a gas cap. We see that there are a broad range of commodities here, oil and gas. We also see that there are different fluid contacts in the field, with varying by compartment. And some of the faults appear to be sealing, and some of them appear to be non-sealing. Also, if we look at the stratigraphic section here, we can see that there's a broad range in the reservoir quality with well-sorted sands to poorly sorted sands near the top. So no singular volumetric term, for example, porosity, can adequately assess the field. In this case, we'll have to dice this thing into approximately 25 compartments. Let's consider the importance of stratigraphic zonation of our reservoir. In this example well here, on the left we have the gamma ray and V-shell curve, and on the right we have the neutron density porosity curve. And we have basically one singular zone in here with a net to gross of about 45% and an average porosity of 11%. As further development of the field occurs, we'll have a sufficient number of wells to start to zonate the sands. And in this case now we can see there are four sands. And there's quite a bit of heterogeneity in these sands. If we look at the table here of our minimum, maximum, and average porosity and standard deviation, we can see that porosity ranges from 5% to a max of 19%. And the average porosities range from 9 to 15%, as you can see on this well. By zoning these formations into these intervals, we can get a much more accurate assessment of the in-place volume. There are various methods for doing volumetric. In my experience, the map-based method is one of the most common and also the most useful. Useful because the maps show the spatial variation in the hydrocarbons initially in place. The method for doing this is that individual maps representing the volumetric equation terms are multiplied together to estimate the hydrocarbons initially in place. So let's take a look at this example here. We have a structure map for the top of the reservoir, an isochore, in this case here it's a constant 100 feet thick, and we know that there's some hydrocarbon water contact, which defines the, the, the basically the gross rock volume. So it's the area times the height. If we take a map of the net to gross, in this case here this blue area is a higher net to gross, and we multiply that in equation, we'll get the net reservoir volume, or net rock volume. Then we multiply it by the porosity. Here we get up to 30% porosity in the blue area, which is there's sort of a channel feature running through here. And then we get the net pore volume. And then we work on the hydrocarbon saturation map of the area, and which gets up to about 80% hydrocarbon saturation and there we'll get the hydrocarbon pore volume. So we have these terms here that we're talking about as uh, the abbreviations are defined here. Finally, we need some kind of formation volume factor, either the oil shrinkage or the gas expansion factors. And this will convert the hydrocarbon pore volume of the hydrocarbons initially in place into stock tank barrels or standard cubic feet of gas. And finally, if we want to get the estimated ultimate recovery, we need to look at the recovery efficiency, in which case we would multiply that into the equation. Let's take a closer look at the maps that we saw on the previous slide. We'll start by looking at the structure map. It's on a base. The gray squares or sections are one mile on a side. And we're looking at the subsea structure map on the top of the reservoir with a 100-foot contour interval. We have an oil water contact at minus 5150. The green dashed line and the red line is a 100 foot gas cap. And we see that the gas oil contact is at 4750. So we, from there, we can make an oil isochore. Notice that it thins towards the edges as we get into the wedge zone near the oil water contact. And it also thins near the gas cap where uh, there is no oil at the crest of the structure. 
Similarly, we made a gas isochore map. And you can kind of see here that we have the thickest part of the gas column here, and it thins towards the wedge of the gas cap. We made a net to gross map where basically we're shaling out over here to the northwest. And on the northeast side of the field, we have this high net to gross, a channel feature running through the area. We have a porosity relationship of net to gross with. Uh, with porosity and we see that in the channel we have the highest porosities of about 30 percent and basically zero porosity in the shaled out zone up to the northwest. The hydrocarbon saturation map is which is basically one minus the water saturation was made by having a transform that related water saturation to porosity and as you can see here that our hydrocarbon saturation is at about 80 percent in the channel feature and we have basically zero water sat or oil saturation up here in the northeast where it's shaled out. We've multiplied these maps together and we've made a original oil in place in green and an original gas in place and the key thing to notice here is that you can see where that channel feature here is where we have the concentration or the most oil in place in the entire field area. One of the key utilities of the map based system is that we can allocate the hydrocarbons in place by owner or lease. In this case here we have four leases per section and we can see in this case here that the different lease holders have different amounts of in place hydrocarbon as reported in thousands of stock tank barrels per lease. So basically here is your sweet spot. These would be the leases that you'd want to have in your portfolio. Similarly, we've done the same thing with the gas cap. 